Join me with Chaz Horn today where we talk about the five pillars of growing and scaling your business on LinkedIn. Hello, everyone. I'm here with Chaz Horn, and Chaz has worked in sales for over 25 years. He was the top sales rep or in the top 3% of all sales reps in five diverse industries. Chaz has broken sales records for most sales in a month, a year, in a five-year period with established businesses. He moved from sales to sales management to starting his own business after creating his unique sales and marketing systems, process, and strategies. Unique as it brings the sales and marketing process together, working congruently. He did this after personally surveying over 2,000 business owners, founders, CEOs, presidents, and C-level executives. Through the survey, he learned the top four symptoms in their core problems. Today, Chaz's business, Mastery of B2B Sales, focuses on helping small B2B companies eliminate their sales and marketing problems. And today, we're going to be talking about LinkedIn and the five pillars of establishing authority and scaling your business on this platform. Chaz, how are you doing today? Uh, great. Awesome to be here, David. Um, yeah, I'm excited to, to get into this and really bring some value for your listeners. And as I take this and put it out there as content for my listeners as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, LinkedIn, so important. And, and it seems to be the platform that is holding strong. They took the slow growth. They took the slow path, you know, the turtle and the hare, right? Uh, and now it's a platform that isn't gunked up at all. Uh, and it's the way to be, especially for B2B. So very, very excited to hear your insights so we can help, you know, small, medium and large businesses. I, I know you mentioned small businesses, but uh, large businesses still operate in the same account-based yep. way. So, but, but on that note, on that note, um, you know, would like for you as the authority here, you know, what types of businesses or, you know, you know, what kind or what size should put efforts towards establishing authority on LinkedIn? Is it simply for B2B types of business, B2B types of businesses, or do you see this also for companies that might have a B2C focus? Yeah, that's a great question. So you can do both. It's a little bit different strategy, obviously, but let me just back up a couple steps, David, because uh, <laughs> I talked to somebody, as you mentioned, I served, it's over 3,000 actually now. Huh. And when I talk to these business owners and the technology companies that I work with, probably about 50%, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, you know, managed services, uh, network security, those type of businesses, they have the most antiquated sales and marketing processes in place. <laughs> They're still having their people pick up the phone and make 50. I had this one company is making their sales reps call, make 200 calls a day, uh, it, which is totally ridiculous. I have nothing against making, you know, cold calls or anything like that, but it's simply in my eyes, a waste of time. It takes a lot of time. You get dismal results. So getting into LinkedIn, the reason why it's so important, and by the way, I came from a background where I had to make cold calls. I mean, I started making, I worked for a, a guy who worked, who is uh, worked for Xerox, started his own business, uh, hired me as a sales rep. And back then Xerox, they made their people go door to door 30 a day. Okay. So I've done it all. And there's just a better way to do it. I use an acronym tabs, T A B S. And then I'm going to jump right into the pillar if that's okay with you. Hey, you go, you go okay. where you, where, where so, you feel like you're going to. So here's, the, here's the acronym. It's tabs. And the reason why I use tabs as the acronym is because you can keep tabs on where you are, why you're getting results, why you're not getting results. And you can identify it within a couple minutes once you know and understand this. So T is for technique. Technique is not about manipulation, but it's about being a true professional guiding and directing the process. The first step in our sales process, because as you mentioned, I bring both of those sales and marketing together congruently. The reason why um, technique is so important is on the first step of the process, that's intention, the intention to serve. If you don't go with the intention to serve, guide and direct the process because we are the true professionals and we need to guide and direct so we can uncover, there should be an aha moment during the conversation where not only for the person you're talking to, but for yourself, where it's like, oh, crap. You know, yeah, this is the symptom. You drill down below the symptom and you uncover how it's affecting their business, but more importantly, how it's affecting them. 
that's when you can have a laser focused guided presentation. So technique is essential. A is for attitude. Really, we use the word mindset today, but M doesn't fit into my acronym. <laughs> okay, so attitude uh, is so important in our mindset. And here's a perfect example. I was talking to a guy, Jim. Um, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks ago. He started off the conversation. Understand, David, he reached out to me and he said, he said, uh, Chaz, I just want you to know before we start talking, I don't have a budget or if I do, it's a shoestring budget. So I said to him, I said, I said, Jim, why are we talking? You know, a lot of salespeople and I'm talking business owners, CEOs, they hear this thing that's like, okay, that's a little awkward and they sweep it under the rug. You got to address the elephant in the room. So true. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if I didn't call him out on that, that's going to rear its ugly head and I'm going to waste a bunch of time and he's going to get down. Well, remember Chaz, I told you we don't have a budget. <laughs> yeah. Right? Hey, uh, guilty as charged and uh, <laughs> enter my hanging head and shame emoji right now. Yeah. Well, I, I think, think we all have been guilty of that. And you're like, yeah, but I can turn them around. Now, so please dig into this for us. This yes. Is yeah. So I said, I said, why are we talking? And so a long pause. Okay. By the way, Never, ever, 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 ever interrupt a long pause when you ask a good question. It shows they're thinking of their answer. There's been a study. Sales reps will interrupt a conversation within two minutes or two seconds, I mean, if the other person doesn't respond and you miss out on great golden information. So he was, he's, he's kind of stammered a little bit. And long story short, they went from a $20 million company to a $7 million company in five years, okay, going the wrong way. And in drilling down, uh, find out they cut their sales training, they cut out a lot of their marketing. And this may sound just obvious to us because we're talking about it now, but I hear stories like this all the time that they're so busy within the business, they're losing it, but they don't understand why. So it was obvious, we had that aha moment. He's like, oh crap. We instead of so then the conversation became of what's it costing him as opposed to budget. Well, how did that come back? Let's back up because you really caught my attention. You know, I, I grew up selling first, and then I got into marketing. So I, I do. I have seen both sides, met on both sides of each department, um, and that's a big one. You know, mm -hmm. the you know I have no budget, and then you said, "Why are we talking? What happened there?" And how else, I can't be the only time you've heard that because I think if, if everybody just gets a pointer from this one thing, they're gonna be better at their careers and, and we're all gonna appreciate this. Um, so Jeez. please dig into this a little bit more for me. Yeah, so and, and I just say, and, and I've, I've put a lot of content around this, but you have to address the elephant in the room because during the, and this is where that mindset comes from because you know, or TA or A mindset, uh, attitude mindset. So if someone says, I guarantee during the course of a conversation, people are gonna say something that is like, it's really awkward. You gotta address it or they'll contradict themselves. And it's not that they're just lying. It's usually they don't know and understand. And so it's our job as a true professional to guide and direct the conversation and point it out. So when he said, you know, uh, we don't have a budget or shoestring budget. And I said, why are we talking? You know, it's like, uh, long pause. It must've been like eight, nine seconds. Then he's like, well, we've been having some problems and over the years, I said, well, tell me what's happened over the last five years. And that's when he responded that we've, we've gone from 20 million to 7 million and we got to get this turned around. When I drilled down, when I say drilled down, by the way, just for the point of this conversation, it means I'm asking additional questions to get below the surface into the core, the core problem. Because mm -hmm. you ask a question, people are going to give you fluff answers. I use what I call, this is another technique, by the way, going back to T, is the 3X formula. You ask a question and then you follow up up to three times to get to the core of the issue, the truth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So drilling down, asking them additional questions, that's when I found out that they went from 20 million to 7 million. The business was going to go, I mean, it, it got into some serious pain. So we had that aha moment. The whole conversation was different from there on. Mm -hmm. If I didn't address that elephant in the room, 
it would have gone nowhere. So, so uh, like a good indicator for all, us all, you know, is to, when you have that feeling of that's odd, you know, like, why are we talking like, or anything, it's not just the budget thing, but right when you have that, just have that be your reminder, stop, address it. Like, okay, exactly. well, let's, let's get this out of the way because, and I will say this for all the salespeople out there, um, leads, who cares? Qualified leads, qualified opportunity sales, that's what matters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and we're talking about, you know, dialing for dollars. It's not necessarily a waste of time. It's not the best use of your time. And it's not the best use of your time to talk to somebody and go down a road where you aren't really getting to the core root. So this is a massive time saver. Even if that call ends right away, well, great, go to lunch, you know, go, go run, go walk, go call somebody, do something else, right? Yeah. So right when you hear that, go, okay, all right, continue. Yes, and that's so true. And, and that's another thing that I, I've talked so much about through our, our training and coaching is who do you work with and who don't you work with? So many sales reps, and I'm talking CEOs, founders, you know, a lot of those do selling for their company who I work with. Um, they spend and waste their time on people they think are a good fit in their mind. And they go after what I call the chase mode, chasing people who have no interest in really talking with you. And they just give you, you know, things that may give you, may think that they're interested, but they're truly not. So anyway, so technique, attitude, mindset, B is the behaviors. And so making cold calls as a behavior. Okay. It's not a good strategy, by the way, S is strategy, but in my system and in my process, and now I'm going to kind of segue into the five pillars. There is a behavior that drives everything else. And if you can imagine, um, David, have you ever seen one of those old fashioned water pumps? You got to pump, 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 you know, to get the water up. And then once you have the water flowing, I mean, it's flowing and you don't have to pump it very hard. When you first start it, you're going like this, pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping it. So it's no different in our, our system, in our process, for anybody's process for that matter. You have to have a behavior that moves the needle. And by doing that, you're gonna get qualified leads, okay? So you wanna get it so the behaviors are happening. By the way, if someone's struggling in any area with, you know, leads, qualified leads, appointments. The first thing I look at is the behaviors because people decide, commit, and execute, or many times they don't because when they try something new, they're getting out of their comfort zone and that execution is where they lack most. So that's what I look at first, okay? So the behaviors has to be done. It has to be done consistently. It has to be part of your regular because if you don't do that, it ain't going to happen. Nothing. You could have the great, greatest technique and mindset, but if you don't have the behaviors that move the needle, forget it. And on that note of behaviors, I'd like to talk with you about the consistency and the buying of it, buying in of it all, because mm -hmm. I think that's probably <clears throat> top two or three reasons marketing plans fail uh, is that you don't stay consistent with it. You know, in this day and age, I don't know if it's ever, not been this way of instant gratification, but it's more prevalent than ever right now. And everybody wants things to work right away. And we're, we're in, in the online and the sales world, the marketing world is busier than ever. So you've got, so I just like for you to talk a little bit about consistency. <laughs> I tell people when I get on the call, because about 50% of the people I talk to, I don't invite into my program. And it's usually between one or four reasons. First of all, I ask them, I go, if there's a catch to my program, it's this, you know, people need to be coachable, meaning they listen and take action. They're decisive, meaning they act on their dreams and don't allow fear to stop them. They're resourceful, meaning that they don't do paralysis by analysis, meaning, okay, they're about to execute, but okay, if I do this, what's going to happen here? If you could picture a, a uh, I was just listening to Ed Milet. I don't know if you know him or not, but uh, listen to a podcast with them. Um, I can't remember the name now, but they were using a word picture of a car driving down the street and at night and the headlight only shows you so much and you don't know where to turn until you get there. And so it's same in life. You have to act, take action. And as you take action, resourcefulness is because every business is a little bit different. You need to be able to think on the fly. Failure is something that's going to happen when you're doing something new. Toddlers get it. 
A toddler doesn't walk around, fall down. He's like, crap, I'm not going to, I'm just going to crawl the rest of my life. But when we get, you know, somewhere around 20s and stuff, we just start even younger than that. If we fail, we have a tendency to beat ourselves up, meaning ask the wrong question. So we'll say things like, why do I always do this? I'm, I suck. You know, I'm a failure. That You do that and you're definitely going to, that is going to be a destination. So failure is a step in the process, meaning that we fail. We ask ourselves the right questions, which mean, okay, what can I learn from this? First of all, we get to own it. Own the failure. You own the failure and then you can learn from it. What can I learn from this? What can I do? Who can I talk to? What training can I go through? And then you move on. I had one client in particular. <laughs> uh, I won't say her name, but <laughs> she got on the phone. She was in a foul mood. And, <laughs> and I was in it. She, I mean, she had this kind of tendency too. And I don't, I'm never demeaning or anything with my clients, but I'm not here to be their friend. I'm here to help them understand and realize their potential. So I just called her out and we were about 10 minutes and she was yelling and screaming. And I go, look, do you want to use this anger, frustration, fear to motivate you and get something out of it? Or do you want to be in a pity party? Life is meant to live outside our comfort zone and those failures are a step in the process. So we learn from those. Business is not all tactical. Uh, having these conversations from experts like yourself do, do not always need to focus on here's the best word to use, here's the best time to post, and yada, yada, yada. A lot of it is a lot. The majority of it is mindset. And, 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 to, and you know, we're, we're really big believers in the universe and the powers of it and everything. And, and you know, if you say, I can't, well, then, hey, your wish is my command. <laughs> you won't. You know, so that that applies in, in in big picture, but also on in everyday life. So it's very important that you touch on it. And it's also very important that everybody needs to understand they're not alone. We've all gone through this. My, my partner's seen me cry many times. You know, he, he's seen me, you know, you know, bang my head. And sometimes or once my fist on the wall, it's happened. We all deal with it. But we got to keep going. You got to learn from it. And, and life is about challenging yourself if you want to grow. So just, I just want to just empathize with people who are listening, thinking like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this guy, Chaz, he's been there and done it. Easy for him to say it. He's successful. No, he wasn't. He went through the journey that he's trying to coach you through. Let me just say something too. So I can, I can put uh, people at ease because sometimes if you listen to someone or watch something on a podcast or wherever, it's like, Oh, you know, it's the overnight sensation over 30 years, that type of thing. In the 90s, I was homeless living in my freaking car. And a, a guy, Ken Upton, um, took me under his wing and he said, Chaz, and I wasn't selling crap. I was working for this place. I was, uh, um, you could, I was selling advertising. So I finally got to the place where I traded out advertising with hotels. So, so I had a place to live. And he said, Chaz, you could be the number one sales rep in this company. And he believed in me, but you got to follow the system. You got to follow the process. You got to quit doing things your way. Well, I was scared and I was fearful. So I followed the system. I followed the process. I followed the script word for word. And within 30 days, there's like 119 sales reps in the company. Um, and I wasn't number one, but I was in the top 3%. And so, you know, I got to live in a place that didn't have, you know, automatic windows. Living in my freaking car, you know, back in the 90s. I learned so much from that. And now it's a funny story to tell, but it wasn't funny at the time. So we're going through tabs. So technique, attitude, or mindset, behaviors, we talked about that, and then strategy. All so right. the strategy, and that we're going to segue into the pillars on LinkedIn. So the strategy, and this is, because we talked a lot about kind of sales, and so I bring it together. So the strategy on LinkedIn, the reason why we have five pillars is because it's about developing an audience who know, like, and trust you. And most importantly, key differentiator in the marketplace is they see you as an authority. If people don't see you as an authority, I mean, they're just going to move on down the road. Or, and, or it's price-based. Yes, exactly. And price-based, there could be a couple things. Authority, if you don't get into deep enough problems and how it's affecting them personally and or their objective that they're trying to achieve. If you don't bring those together, they don't see you as something who could truly bring value. Cause what's it about? People don't care anything about me. They care about what are the outcomes I can provide for them. That's all they care about. 
you know, you see a lot of these, you know, internet things with cars and houses and all that. And I understand the, the draw, but in the, the bottom line, if you can't get someone results, you're not going to be in business. You got to have that intention to serve them. Yep. And, and it may mean asking some difficult questions or what I say, like come to Jesus, like with that guy, it's like, Jim, why are we talking? You know, <laughs> you don't have a budget. Why are we talking? Sometimes you, you have to have that pattern interrupt. It gets their attention. So it's not going through the same thing where they're guiding and directing the process. If you let them guide and direct the process, you ain't going to get anywhere. It's going to be a waste of your time and theirs. The five pillars, it all starts with your platform. And the reason, again, why five pillars is this is not just a short term, you know, shiny object. Oh, well, let's jump in there. And there's a lot of LinkedIn gurus out there. By the way, if someone has a, a guru in their title, don't, don't work with them. <laughs> okay. Within LinkedIn, the five pillars, it all starts with your, your profile. The reason why the profile is so essential, you go, and by the way, take some time to look at some people's profiles. Look at my profile, you know, Taz Horn, LinkedIn, Lee Summit, Missouri. If you just Google that, you'll see my LinkedIn uh, link come up. But the profile, people are going to come there and within three seconds, they're going to think, what the hell does this guy do? There's a confused message. Hey, this is someone who I could potentially work with. Makes sense. And just so you know, kind of looking at the profile, obviously updated, you know, photo, the banner, you know, a lot of people have these branding banner things. The thing that resonates most has to do with you in a picture working with people, not, you know, stock images or anything like that. By the way, the cool thing about LinkedIn and marketing nowadays is that it's all about authenticity. The more authentic and real you are, you know, and with your pictures, your content, your background photo, people connect with that because so, the corporate stock images, photos, all this money spent, it doesn't resonate with people anymore. Mm -mm. So the, the people that can adjust are agile and adapt. Those are the people that, you know, and Gary V says, document, don't create. And if you're just yourself and talk about yourself in the process and are real. Now, I'm going to use some some language here, which is very important, but yeah, that's where it starts authenticity. So banner photo with you working with your clients, it resonates. OK, and then uh, under your name on the profile, uh, really important. You have to have it, I, I could care less about being a founder or CEO or anything like that. So what I have is a. Um, sales and marketing strategist. Okay, it's a little bit intriguing, something different, uh, gets people's attention. And then following that, eliminating sales and marketing challenges for small B2B businesses. So within there, they see an outcome or eliminating of something bad, eliminating uh, sales and marketing challenges. So it's a, a, a mini value proposition. Plus people can see within that short description, hey, I'm in this target market with who he works with. So very important. And it sounds so simple, but getting to that point where people can understand what, what you're saying at a fifth grade level, it will resonate and they'll connect with it in, in seconds. Tell that to my wife, please. Tell that to my <laughs> wife. She gets mad at me all the time because she's a more of a literary you know, genius <laughs> that I am. And uh, I use words incorrectly sometimes, but I was like, but you know what I meant? You know what I meant? It's about communication, language. <laughs> so anyways, it's a personal, well, and I don't personal, know. personal fight I'm having with my wife every day. Well, 80% of our communication too is our body language and our tone. So yeah. it's not what we say, but how we say it. Okay. So, <laughs> so I don't know. There may be something in there with your body language and tone. So, no, no, it's, it's, so, it's definitely using the incorrect, the language. Okay. 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 Well, <laughs> I, won't that, I won't go down that road, but so so we have that. Now it's keyword optimized. Now I'm not talking about ranking your profile on Google or Bing or anything like that. Can you do it? Potentially. But I'm talking within LinkedIn. You know, there's certain keywords, key phrases, long tail keywords that people are going to search, you know, B2B sales, you know, whatever industry you're in, there are certain keywords that people look up and look for. And so having your profile, people are going to type things in LinkedIn and you want your profile to show up. And so I show people how to do that. By the way, this, 
you have people that charge thousands of dollars for setting up your profile and they won't even guarantee that, you know, people will connect with you. They're say giving you a better chance. Okay. This is just icing on the cake. So I'm not here to say, have your profile set up and leads are going to become pouring in. It's about setting yourself up as an authority. I'm just telling you to tweak it because within LinkedIn, it's those little things. I tell my clients all the time. It's these little things that maybe three people will reach out to you during the course of the month. One of those actually becomes a client. So about you is the other part. And I talk about conversational uh, with keywords. So you talk about outcomes, the outcomes you provide in a conversational way. And then I have a um, links to uh, on mine. Um, one of my clients, I love that they do this. Clients will send me uh, videos appreciating what they got out of the program, just out of the blue. Uh, now it's not like I get like every day or something, but I'll get maybe one or two of these a month. And I, and I love it because that's my passion to help people understand when they, when they get results, I mean, you talked about getting emotional. I really do get emotional because some of these people are, I mean, this gal, she had a good business, driving business, branding business. Over eight months, she tripled her business. She was one of my best clients. I mean, she did everything I said. She followed through. She didn't allow fear to stop her. If you do that in our program, you're going you're gonna to kill it. You're going to crush it. So I have that information there. So that helps build authority. And then... Uh, down about midway through the, on the profile, you have, if you create an article, there's going to be a big block of information. The reason why the article and content is going to be the third pillar. We're going to get there. But the article is important because people are going to go to your profile. They're going to go to your article. And if it's some cheesy marketing thing where people look at and they don't get any value out of it, they're just going to move on down the road. So the article should be a piece that helps build your authority. Because people are going to look at it and they're going to look at it and say, oh, wow, this person knows what he's talking about. She's talking about. And then experience, you know, it's more in-depth, conversational and, and whatnot. So profile is important. Let me recap some what I'm hearing on the, the importance of the profile. One, um, you know, get, you know, be authentic and get to the point of how you can help versus a bunch of fluff and, and anything like that. And then we're talking about authority parts of this, which are going to be making sure you have some good content that when people look to see that you have some stuff, but make sure that that content is good. You know, obviously, I mean, that's, you, you kind of, you kind of touched on that, but I want to bring that back home. Don't just write a piece, again, a fluffy, this is what we do. This is who we are. No, get some content out there. That's going to be, here are the 10 things that you need to do right away with your LinkedIn profile for a company like you, or the top 10 things you need to do right away on LinkedIn to start to start establishing your authority, not, hey, I'm Chaz Horn and I can do those things for you. Like, ah. Oh. You have to give them value. You know, a lot of people are so afraid to give away their value. Right. Yeah. You know, and I love how Gary V is with this. He's, he says, you know what, one, only 1% 1 are gonna use the information anyway. Right. You know, so with it, like on my LinkedIn page, I have don't hire that sales rep yet. Well, it's kind of intriguing. And when I was in sales management, um, I tweaked the system and I was able to identify, bring on sales reps that worked and many of them are still there today. And before that, there was just turnover, turnover, turnover. But the core of the message is I give some very specific things that they need to look for and looking for a sales rep. But at the bottom there, I say, if you don't have a sales and marketing uh, thing that's proven in place, don't hire a sales rep yet because they need something to plug into. If you're looking to hire a sales rep to solve your sales woes, you're gonna be fr frustrated, they're gonna be frustrated because a salesperson is not, you're not gonna be able to pay for a salesperson who can implement a sales process and, strat and marketing strategy. Very important to have that, they can see it, they read it, this person knows what the heck they're talking about. The second point, okay, so I said mentioned Sales Navigator. The reason why it's so important is on Sales Navigator, and I love this, you can target, by the way, I take people through a targeting process so that we identify their target market with someone who's in the decision process. You don't want to waste your time talking to people. Like I had a gal, that same gal that was really grumpy on that call with me. <laughs> um, she was reaching to HR managers. And I'm like, why the hell are you reaching? It? HR managers don't care about the business as a whole. And I'm always pushing people out of their comfort zone to go higher, 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 higher. You can have a more intelligent conversation at the C level. Now, obviously, if you're reaching corporations, 
is a little bit different, but I'm talking small to medium sized businesses, you know, two to 500, somewhere along in those range. There's a different strategy in reaching other, other company corporations. We can talk about that at a different time. So on Sales Navigator, you not only connect with them with a message that's intriguing. Hello, by the way, if you just have a message, you're doing 50% more than everyone else. A lot of people just go connect, 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 connect. That's a good way to get into LinkedIn jail, okay? Because LinkedIn doesn't like that. And if you're in LinkedIn jail, sorry, you blew it. You, uh, you connect, you, uh, you target, you connect with, with an intriguing message. And then we're going through that second pillar, which is the messaging pillar. This is where so many people screw it up. You have to connect. And when you connect, you cannot try to sell. Please don't. Don't do that. And by the way, I just put out a, a, some content yesterday. Our met, we call it the appreciation message. You got to connect with them as a connection. Forget about branding or business. You're connecting with someone. They're looking at you as a connection that can bring value. How? So the appreciation message helps build some rapport. It's about doing something for them using the law of reciprocity. Okay. So you actually, it doesn't take any of your time. For instance, I, people come in and I offer to share their content. You know, I have 18,000 connections around. They're just under. And so sharing someone's content uh, with my, my followers, that's significant. But you know what? Only 5% of the people I connect with take me up on it. But myself and my uh, clients, they actually have people saying thank you about 20, 25% of the time for connecting with them. That doesn't happen on LinkedIn very often. So you're building a relationship, your connection that within a week, now this process is automated and I customize everything. So it's not like spammy stuff. I'm not into spam. I'm not into salesy content. I'm the opposite, okay, of how, how we talk and how we, how we address people. But it's all about, okay, you're offering this, then it's time to find out about their business. So you connect with some anywhere from 300 to 600 targeted connections. Each You do the math, 3,600 over 7,000 per year. You do the math on that, 7 to 11% of those are going to come back for this message within 7 to 10 days afterwards and tell you about a problem. Now, this is the symptom level. You know, you talked about, I, you know, surveyed a bunch of business owners, top three, lack of sales pipeline. You know, there's a lot more to that. That's a symptom sales cycle too long. That's a symptom sales process or uh, lack of an ineffective sales process. That's a little bit deeper than a symptom. And then established co companies in a, inadequate upselling and cross selling opportunities. That's a symptom. Okay. But you start at the symptom level because people can identify that. Okay. So they tell you about a problem. Now, remember, they're in your target market. They're seeing you as an authority because your profile is filled out. You have your uh, article there. You're offering them something of value. You're building rapport. They're starting to see, hey, this, this person is pretty cool. I'm starting to like this person. By the way, it has to be authentic. You can't use it as a tactic. It, you have to be real about doing this. And then you ask a question about their business, and it's very specific in how I work through it and why it's effective. So they tell you, about a problem. And so think about that. That's a qualified lead. Target market, decision maker, see you as an authority. They've told you about a problem they have. How many times do you start a conversation with someone where you already know the symptom of the problem? It's very simple from there to continue the conversation. And that's why our closing percentage with our clients is like 12 to 27% higher. By the way, 11 to 27 qualified appointments our clients get from just working that process right there. Okay. Now, the third pillar is content. So content is important. By, if I talk to someone, I, a lot of technology companies, I was talking to this one guy, he's an engineer, and I started mentioning content, and I could tell he was getting nervous. Uh, we were on the phone, so I couldn't see his body language. And, and I just said, I said, uh, I said, Doug, I said, I go, have you created much content? He goes, no. I thought of that freaks me out. It's not about creating content, it's about documenting what you do. If you work with someone, they have a problem and you go through the process and you fix it, you have awesome content to share with people. You know, some people call it a case study. Those type of things are valuable. So the content though, unless you're an influencer on LinkedIn, you can't get it out to people. You can't get traction. So what we do is we have a viral content group, works with the three most important things within LinkedIn that affect the algorithms. And if I can have a scale, one point for a like, two points for a comment, three points for a share, LinkedIn doesn't have that scoring system. 
but it's pretty accurate. And when you have a group of people in a concentrated period of time doing that to your content, it gets viral. If you're our president, I am a president of a, a managed service company. He had 40 employees. If you're sharing content, hey, 10 o'clock on Wednesday, guys, go to here, like, comment, and share the content. Boom. Yeah, let me point this out. Uh, let me point out what Chad said. I do not want this to get glossed over. You have your own social sharing group. And I, and I was hoping you were going to say this, but I didn't want to say it for you because I want, wanted to hear what your thoughts are since, you know, like I said, you're, you're the expert in, in this area. You have built in social sharing group. It's called your teammates. Yep. Just get them involved and do what Chad says on that time, on that date, consider it a one minute meeting. How many meetings do we have in a week? Too many, yeah. but one minute meetings, one minute meetings, plan on it. Uh, get your, you know, managers, teammates, CEOs, get yeah. your team and, and five people makes a difference. 10 people is not nothing. I mean, I mean, right, Chaz? I mean, 10 people engaging in the first first hour is going to get you play. So, yeah. like, do it. Do that. This is why it's important. You're connecting, remember, 7,000 people a year, you know, anyway, three to 7,000 people a year. Around 10% are actually telling you about a problem. Those other 90% they are going to forget about you on social media. That's why the content is important. And that's why it's important to get it out because it's going to be shared with those people in this way. That's how you build out a long, a short-term and a long-term strategy of people who, my, my dog's bringing me my ball. She wants to go fetch, sorry, <laughs> her ball. So that's how you develop a long-term strategy of people who know, like, and trust you because your content is getting in front of them. By the way, LinkedIn actually has people that review content and if they like it because LinkedIn would cease to exist if they didn't have good content. So they want good content and they have people that review it and push it out. I have a post from December 26th um, that we had 72,000 views. So our clients get a, an increase in views anywhere from 500 to 1500%. We've had people with 5,000, 30,000, 20,000, but typically it's more like the person who's getting like 100, 150 is now getting 750 to 1,000. It's getting in front of, because the likes and comments and all that are, are great if other people in addition to that are doing that, but it's getting, there's so many people out there that look at stuff and don't comment on it but you're getting in their mind. And so you have the profile, you have the messaging funnel, you have the content. LinkedIn groups and notifications are the last two in the LinkedIn groups in mastermind is mastery of selling B2B for the small business. You can look it up on LinkedIn. I show you how to bring in people that are in your target market who actually come in and engage. And I probably get three, four or five appointments just for my LinkedIn group each and every month. So that LinkedIn group is a strategy and it grows slowly. I had a client who picked up three appointments when she only had 30 people in her LinkedIn group. It's long-term, okay? So you have your short, your medium with the content and your long-term with the LinkedIn group. And then the last thing is notifications. When I say notifications, and that's the fifth pillar, this is what really helps you be more likable and amiable in their eyes. LinkedIn actually tells you when their birthday is, when their anniversary is, when they've had a job change, a promotion. And so I've picked up two people in one week from the birthday message. You know, go, you go to their post, you comment with something and you tag them in it. You do this and you'll have a group of people who know, like, and trust you and you get, and you do it consistently. I mean, you'll have, I, in my uh, HubSpot, I use HubSpot for all my, for my CRM and I have more leads than I, I, can think of to follow up with. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to be spending over the next couple of days, just, I have a, a video way. I have a, a personal video that I scheduled most of my appointments with, but it works, but you work LinkedIn, you know, be authentic, use the five pillars, you reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'd be glad to talk to you. I usually have an intro call with someone. By the way, I don't talk to someone and try to sell them something. I look to learn about each other's business. If I can help you, I would schedule a, a, a different appointment with you. I talk with as many people as possible because I enjoy that. I've learned so much with engaging with people off of LinkedIn and actually talking to them on the phone. Well, that, that's awesome. And on that note, um, do share how people can continue to learn from you. I'm sure you have all kinds of great resources on your website or maybe on your profile. So why don't, why don't you share how people can continue to learn from you? Because you've given us a great uh, 10,000 foot overview and as well as some really great takeaways and pointers of what you can do right now 
but I know there's a lot more, right? I know there's yes. a lot of details so that we can't cover in a, in a 45 minute call here. So uh, yeah, do let people uh, know how they continue to learn from you and any resources that you have. Yeah. If you just Google search Chaz Horn, C-H-A-Z-H-O-R-N, you know, LinkedIn, uh, Lee Summit, Missouri, L-E, two words, L-E-E, possibly S, Summit, Missouri. Um, or you just put Chaz Horn, Lee Summit, Missouri, you'll probably, you'll see my LinkedIn information. You or you can search me, uh, LinkedIn, Mastery, any of those terms, you'll, you'll just, if you connect with me on LinkedIn, send me a message and say, hey, I heard the podcast with David and I wanted to reach out to you because 95% of the people who try to connect with me uh, I don't connect with unless they're in my target market or they have a message that resonates because I appreciate that because that's what I do. So uh, reach out to me. Um, you know, I don't know if you have the, the a way to, I have a master class, which is 32 minutes, which I give three of the case studies, which people can go through and instead of going to the registration link and getting to an email automation. I'd be glad to give the replay. People can check that out. And there's actually a link at the end. If you want to schedule a, what I consider a breakthrough strategy session, in that, I go a little bit more into the sales side, but I have one of the pillars on LinkedIn, but I really get in a little bit deeper there. So that's something I can share if you have a way of sharing content with people uh, within here. Go ahead and send it to me and we'll include it in the, the written summary that we have with a link. Okay, yeah. But anyway, yeah, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, that's the best place to reach me. That's what I do. Yes, I use some other social media, but that's my main focus. There's no better platform if you have the right system and strategy and process to plug into to build and grow your business. All right. Well, thank you so much, Chaz. Uh, a lot of great pointers. Uh, I feel like you're either going to put people who have no clue pointed in the right direction and people who are moving a direction. And hopefully you've adjusted it for them. So thank you so much uh, for your time today and uh, until next time. Yeah. Awesome to be here. I look forward to talking with you more and we can get drilled down in some of those other points. Thanks, Sounds David. Great. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the latest podcast. Feel free to go to magnificent.com forward slash blog to see the show notes for this interview, as well as those from many other of the world's top marketing experts.